but I am a passionate Tasmanian and that means I'm really friendly. Okay, so let's connect very quickly, engage and create a relationship. Hands up if you are breathing. Oh, that's good so far. Hands up if you're gorgeous. Yeah, hands up if you're extraordinary. Let's go for all three. Hands up if you're breathing, gorgeous and extraordinary. Oh, isn't that a relief? So all the right people are here. Isn't, isn't that wonderful? Now, you're looking at me strangely and some of you are thinking, take me now, Lord. <laughs> I know, some of you want to leave, but we've locked the doors. You can't get out, okay? Some of you are thinking, how come she's been in my home? Well, I have been. You already know me sounding like this. Got a call from Sue's our daughter. Something had distraught her. The wedding place in town had just been to the ground. So the guests were coming here to a place that was severe. Age spray and wipe made everything all right. <laughs> I know, it's deeply, profoundly upsetting, isn't it? That's the spray and wipe commercial. So look, I'm a, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a voiceover artist. I've been a voiceover artist for 40 years. So that means every time I open this hole in my face, I get words to come out through that hole, down through a microphone, out through a speaker, into your ears, eyes, minds, hearts and spirits. And I've only got 30 seconds to change your perception. So I'm in love with the power that words have. Now we've got so many lovely young people here, you're looking at me strangely, but I have actually <laughs> babysat you all, probably, sounding like this. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Blinky Bill and I'm Australia's most mischievous cartoon character and my favouritest word in the whole wide world is... extraordinary. <laughs> I know it's a mental health issue now, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> so look, I mean, if I can actually sell millions of dollars worth of products in 30 seconds through this hole in my face, if I can enchant little children being a cartoon character, you know, in countries around the world, what can we all do every time we open this hole in our face to engage people, to motivate people, to entrance people, to sell our ideas, to, to jump into our awesomeness? I mean, how awesome do we dare to be? So I love big words that grow big people, that grow big futures. Um, and whenever I speak, I talk about the three rules in advertising. The rules are keep it simple, make it memorable, and evoke an emotional response. In 30 seconds, I've got to get you to get it. So effective communicators get people to get stuff. You've heard lots of information today from some wonderful speakers, but I want you to get some stuff today to move this from what you know up here down into here, into your guts. It's like getting your fist and sticking it down through the top of your head, down into, into your guts and pulling out ah, the courage to jump. I was doing an, an ad recently for Tasmanian Tourism and I had to say, one night's accommodation costs only $55. And the man in the recording studio said, gosh, that's good. And I said, you wrote it. See, sometimes we write stuff, sometimes we talk about stuff, but we don't actually get it in here. So my job today is to take you to the edge of the cliff and to encourage you to actually jump, to actually take that action. Isn't that exciting? So look, I've just about exploded up the back and that back chair, there's probably blood and guts everywhere where I've been so excited today. I've been here from the first speaker and it's been so exciting, hasn't it? Aren't your heads just nearly exploding? Uh, and you're going to leave here, like it's nearly, it's four o'clock, you're just about to leave, you're going to go back out into the world and you'll be saying, yeah, bring it on! You know, and Bill and all of his team, they want you to be so excited when you get out into the world tomorrow. And you'll say, yeah, take on my life now, big time. And people will look at you and say, oh God, did you go to that stupid TEDx thing, did you? <laughs> look, you'll get over it. But I got excited once and I got over it. <laughs> you know, so how do you hold on to this enthusiasm? We don't want it to last one day, do we, Bill? We want it to last forever. So how do we hold on to it? I just heard a story about our Tasmanian Indigenous people hundreds of years ago. Um, they used to have a fire stick holder, somebody to hold the fire stick, to keep the fire alight 24 hours a day. You see, you can't sometimes look out there for the fire. Our invitation today is that you become the fire. You are the fire stick holder. And when you're responsible for the fire within, then you get to empower and entrance and excite other people. You get to actually set fire to their imaginations, to their potential. And that, that's how you get to be an empowering leader, to empower other people. Um, so, you know, how do you then, you know, take hold of being a fire stick? Well, look, I was on 207 planes this year, 
207 planes. I fly a lot as a speaker. You know, and people say to me all the time, oh, how do you stay self-motivated? How do you stay so enthusiastic? And my answer is simple. It's always my turn. It's always my turn to be self-motivated. It's always my turn to make sure the fire is alight. And I just take me with me wherever I go. I turn up in my life. That's the only difference. See, I know who turned up today. Who turned up at the TEDx talk today is passion and service. I am being the words passion. I hope you can feel it. You know, and I'm being the words service. I give myself to you. You know, and why am I here? I know what my purpose is. My purpose is to be an, an, an irresistible invitation to participate in life. You know, behind every word I'm uttering, I'm saying, come in, come in, jump, fly. That's what I'm saying behind every word. So, you know, that's really, really exciting. So, you, I'm inviting you to, to jump. And um, I want you to get a few things today. And I've only got 10 minutes. So in advertising, you know, those, uh, those moments where you get it, I call crikey moments. You know when you go, ooh, that's a crikey moment. You've had lots of those today, haven't you? And my little dad, the stockman, would call them bugger me moments. <laughs> so I've got 10 minutes to squeeze as many crikey and bugger me moments into this talk so that you find the courage to jump into a big life. Isn't that an exciting quest? I think it is. You know, so how are we going to do that? Well, you've got to get a couple of things. The first thing you've got to get, as young people sitting here, is the freedom we have in Australia to be awesome. You just woke up this morning in one of the freest countries in the world. You know, one of my jobs as a voiceover artist, I've been doing all the female politicians in a political satire for 26 years. It's called, How Green Was My Cactus? You know, and I get to play all the females. I get to play this woman. Good afternoon. Obviously, I believe that I am Julia Buzzard and I am your Prime Minister and I am moving forward, moving forward and I am rebuilding and creating an economic revolution, revolution. And, and I know things have been tough. I've had lots of troubles. I'm a hoover for trouble. <laughs> yes, I just cracked a joke about our Prime Minister. There are no police from Hobart coming in here to arrest me right now. If I was in Syria, I would be shot. Truly, you know, if I was in some countries, I might disappear and someone might be chopped into little pieces with a machete. That's why our refugees are trying to get out of those countries and I honour those people. You know, I'm so free here. And we don't have one Australia Day, we have 366 Australia Days this year. We have an extra one. And I want you to get Tasmania. You know, it's been so lovely. I'm, yes, I'm a fifth generation Tasmanian, but what's been lovely today is to hear the people who haven't been born in Tasmania, who, who've stood out here, and they get Tassie, don't they? You don't have to have it written on your birth certificate. They get it. And, and all that passion comes from that wonderful swimming in what we have here. You know, Lonely Planet just voted Hobart the seventh uh, best city to visit in the world. And you know what makes me laugh, what the joke is? We're already here. <laughs> I, I just think that's, that's amazing, isn't it? And I want you to get today the power that words have to transform us, to transform others, and to transform the world. You know, being Blinky Bill um, sounds like a, an inconsequential, silly little job, but it's changed my life over the last 20 years because Blinky brought me to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm national patron of Make-A-Wish Australia. I'm a volunteer and I'm a wish granter. I have been for 20 years. I get to grant wishes for children with life-threatening medical conditions. How amazing is that? Now, we always add some embellishments on top of our wishes. We give extra. So for 20 years, I've had this secret where I get to ring some of our children who believe Blinky is real, and I get to call them. You see, and I can change a child's physiology with my voice. I think we can all do that with our voice. I rang Alicia, who has cystic fibrosis. After I called her, her lung function increased dramatically. I rang little uh, Jack. He'd had 16 eye operations because he had a tumour behind his eye. He's only four. So, g'day, Jack, it's Blinky Bill here. I just met your dad. He told me that you're extraordinary. And he told me that you've had 16 eye operations. Wow. How, how courageous are you, Jack? Now, I want you to promise that every day when you wake up, you've got to look at yourself in the mirror with your own good eye. 
And you've got to say to yourself, I am extraordinary. Will you promise you do that? He went, yeah. I got an email from his dad. He said he went past the bathroom and he looked in and there was little Jack looking into the mirror with his little patch on saying, Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. You know, the children in Make-A-Wish have taught me so many things that I want to pass on to you. They've taught me to be able to laugh, have fun and play in the face of excruciating circumstances. Wonderful. They make me laugh. They find access to that wonderful power, humour. I was born in 1950. Um, so, it, I'm very old, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> in 1950, we laughed in Australia for 18 minutes a day. Do you know what it's dropped down to? Four. I know, my youngest son was telling a joke to a, a, a student at uni recently, and she didn't laugh, she said, LOL. <laughs> now, I'm 62, I thought LOL stood for lots of love. No, it's laugh out loud, she didn't laugh. You know, a lady told me her, her little son wakes her up, he's three. Every day he says, Mum, wake up, the day is out there. <laughs> yeah, he's a reminder for me to check your face. You know, would you like to be led by you? Would you like to be inspired by you? Check your face. The next thing the children have taught me that I want to pass on is um, to live with urgency before the emergency. You just heard a very powerful story from Heather. You know, you've got to seize all those moments because you don't know what's ahead. Um, we're great in an emergency. All of our best characteristics come out of us, all of our best behaviours. But what if you imagined the worst and then you stepped backwards and you lived like that now? That's my invitation. I want to tell you a story about Daniel, 13, in Melbourne. He wished to meet Kevin Peterson, the English cricketer. Daniel's brain tumour was so virulent, he was going to die. He had to change his wish. And so he wished for a shopping spree. And Daniel's mum has given us permission in Make-A-Wish to share Daniel's list. I wish for a dishwasher for my mum because she works too hard. I wish for a puppy for my sisters so that they have something to play with when I die. I wish for bracelets for my mum and my sisters with my name engraved on them so that they don't forget me. For my dad, I would like a ring with the words strength and courage engraved on it. All I want is a Hummer ride. And on the morning of the shopping spree, the Hummer turned up, it was donated. He was so ill he could hardly move. He said, I'm going anyway because I don't know when I'm going to die. And they went shopping and they bought all of those things. Mum didn't get a dishwasher, she got a barbecue. And they bought presents for Christmas and birthdays to come. And two weeks later, I got an email from Make-A-Wish that just said, heaven was short of angels today and we lost him. And I speak to thousands of people around Australia and the world and I share that story because it's a reminder from Daniel to live with urgency before the emergency. He pulled out of himself the most amazing characteristics. He became his word. He was the author. He became courage. He became acknowledgement. He became appreciation. He became generosity. He became love. Isn't that an awesome story? Wow. He's inspiring everybody that I speak to. You know, and the, and the last thing the children teach me is to have intentionality. That means be unstoppable. Keep on going in the face of no results. You know, I was speaking in Ireland recently. There's a lovely adage in Ireland. If you want to climb over a great big wall first, throw your hat over. At least you'll be committed. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Both my sons have thrown big hats over the wall. They invented big lives. Toby, my oldest son, when he was nine, he's Toby Leonard Moore. He said, Mum, I want to be an actor. Well, he graduated from NIDA six years ago. He's now a self-sufficient actor in New York City. Daniel, a little bit younger, at six, he said to me at mass one day, Mum, and I said, shh, shh, but Mum, it's really a buy that. I said, what is it, Daniel? And he said, I can see a vein up your nose. <laughs> So Stuart, you'll find this fascinating. What did he become? An architect, right? See, looking up holes and dark structures. <laughs> he just designed a bar in Melbourne. He had six months. He did all of the drawings and he did the project management and then he followed his true love to America. And when he came back, he said, oh, they've probably changed everything. I received an email from him that just said, awesome, Mum. I just walked into my drawings. This is what TEDx is all about. It's an invitation for you to walk into your drawings, into your gifts, into your aspirations and your dreams, into your potential. So every time I speak, some of you have heard me before and I always count the seconds of life.
Here they are. Aren't they gorgeous, golden, delicious house and gone? And I can never repeat myself. Oh, look at that one. You can't get that one back. I was doing this with indigenous teachers at Uluru a few months ago, but they were the Uluru seconds. And here we sit in the TEDx seconds in Hobart. Aren't they beautiful? And they're yours. So before you go, I'm going to ask you to jump into your courage because jumping takes courage. Which empowering word will you be when you leave this TEDx day? Who's got the guts to be the first person to call out which word you're going to be? And take it home with you and take it out into your life. And you can change it any time you want because you are the author. Who's got the guts? You know, because you don't want to die with your potential intact. You know, you can, don't want to die with your self-pity. You want to die being totally free. You want to die with a big life, not a little one. Who's got the guts? Shining. Shining, somebody said. Thank you. And? Extraordinary. Extraordinary. What else? Keep them coming. Courage. Courage. Yes, the courage to jump. That's what it's going to take. You don't know what, what it's going to look like because the future is unknowable. But all we have is that we know who we're going to be. Isn't that awesome? You have so much say in your life, in your future. Keep them coming. Which words? Generosity. Generosity. Yes. And up the back? Gratitude. Yeah, gratitude. How lovely. So look, thank you for your listening. Blinky always has the last word and he said, thank you so very, very much for listening to my friend Robin because she goes on and on and on and I know because I have to live inside of her. <laughs> and I just want to say I hope you've had an extraordinary TEDx day but I really do hope that you will be as awesome and as extraordinary as you dare to be because, <coughs> well, you may as well. <laughs> Hands up if you're still breathing. Yes, gorgeous. Extraordinary, excellent, I know, because you just told me. And that's the power of the word. Thank you all very, very much. God bless you all. <laughs>